Hey everybody, today I want to answer the question, what is a mean deck? Uh, before I say what I think, I want to kind of talk about the general idea of a mean deck that people tend to have before seeing my content. Uh, most people think of a mean deck as being around a card that people make fun of, that is either really bad or really inconsistent, something that people hyped up but ended up being you know, not what they hoped for. Example of this is King Black, one of King Black's two favorite cards, Brand Warrior. Brand Warrior used to be just a seven strength vanilla unit, didn't have any ability text. You had to play it on the range row. You already had the eight strength card, uh, The Fiend, which was already better than it. So what was the point of playing Brand Warrior? So King Black to flex underdog cards, he forged a mean culture around Brand Warrior. For that him, that was that. Again, that's not really what I mean. It's not about the underdog card that's just objectively inferior to another card. Uh, for Merchant, it's cards that are in their context. They're like, they have exciting effects. So, Brand Warrior used to have no effect. For Merchant, it's these cards that have exciting effects, but they're just so outclassed by the other cards. Uh, Merchant's really upset with the, well, he's critical of the fact that uh, all these gold neutrals are pushing out cards that have exciting ability texts like Combi and Wild Boar of the Sea, and he would like, you know, more identity to decks by almost eliminating the old gold neutrals from the, all the gold neutrals from the game. So what makes these two cards in particular mean cards for people like Merchant is that one, their effect is often outclassed by another card, and two, even though they're really exciting cards, it's just like they're hyper situational or just in the case of Wild Boar of the Sea, Wild Boar of the Sea is just super inefficient. They're just better ways of doing the strategy that isn't so costly and the setup isn't so hard to put up. If like Wild Boar of the Sea spawned weather, it'd still be really hard to use. In the future this might not be the case, but at the moment these cards for are just bad cards. I'm not saying that they're not memes, I'm just saying they're not what I consider memes. This is there's a difference for me between a card that people make fun of and make memes around and a meme a mean deck is, for me, is something that tries to, it puts you in an unusual situation. It's not always good. It's not always a good deck, but it puts you in an unusual situation that surprises your opponent deeply. It's also kind of like exciting to play. When you pull it off, the combo is beautiful. It's hard, sometimes it's harder to pull off. I try to make my decks more consistent so that the combo works more often. Ranked decks are almost always consistent. There's like every time you play them, is, there's no such thing as a bad hand in a ranked deck usually, but in a mean deck, there's such thing as a bad hand, and that's what their kind of downfall sometimes is. But when they do work, it's it's wonderful. Um, one of the examples with, of my first meme deck was uh, my trick around deck. The trick around deck wasn't about playing Dragoons. It wasn't really about playing Ambush cards. It was about making Morin useful. Morin was probably what is kind of more to, in the line of Merchant's idea of a meme card. Morin is a Scoia'tael only card that only affects other Scoia'tael cards and not just only other Scoia'tael cards a specific type of Scoia'tael card that not everybody was playing. Not everybody was playing Ambush cards, which is its target. Two, a lot of people are like, why isn't this kind of a neutral effect? Why can't we all have access to Ambush cards? Why is Scoia'tael the counter to Scoia'tael? It doesn't make sense. Morin's a problem in so many different ways, but the thing is that you would probably never run her normally because the uh, it's so hyper situational to be against another ambush card. The only way to solve that, though, and this is what the tri when you trick around 
good, in my opinion, as a meme deck, is that it solved Morin's conditionality by using Operator to copy an ambush card. Now all your opponents have an ambush card. And therefore, Morin will always be effective. That is the logic of, that's part of the logic of it. The second thing is, once you throw that card into their hand, let's say you throw Kieran into their hand, most people don't know how to play Kieran. A lot of new players don't know how to do this because this is a card that none of them are, like, it doesn't, it doesn't hit them on their radar. It didn't hit a lot of people on their radar, and uh, it eventually people realized that the, uh, Kieran was just a better, was a better uh, Siri in many ways because it was a silver that did the same thing. It got you card advantage. Um, so you give your opponent a card they don't really understand. The text of Kirin is extremely confusing. Uh, and sometimes they would even play it on my side of the board because they didn't understand what the card did. They thought by putting it on my side of the board and I'm losing, that they would get the card back. No, that's not how it works. Uh, you give them uh, these ambush cards, and a lot of people didn't know how to use ambush cards, especially new players. And if they tr played it right, you'd still kill it with Moron, and then suddenly the all the benefit of giving them that card is eliminated. Uh, Moron's conditionality is removed. Uh, the fact that you could use Dragoons and copy those buffs was really cool. It had it created this really interesting situation for your opponent. And they had no idea that you could just destroy their ambush card like that. And they can't destroy your ambush card because the only person who's going to run Morin is a Dragoon deck. Uh, so Trick Around, by my thing, is what it's interesting to play. It surprises your opponent deeply. Like, they don't, they have no idea what the strategy is the first time they run into it. Now, now because it's been popularized, uh, everybody knows how to play around trick around. Uh, the next deck uh, was the uh, Warcry of the Champions. It really was it was a little bit about Champion of Champions, but in this case, it was actually about Warcry, which is right here. So Warcry doubles the strength of all wounded cards on the field. Warcry is the best when your cards have high base strength and are at least a little wounded. It's the only real, it's like the only real doubling effect in the game. In a sense, no, not very many people were running Warcry. Even Croc and Crate decks were struggling to run Warcry because it's, it wasn't all that efficient in the current meta. Uh, you don't get a lot of things were um, wanting to stay over several rounds. Uh, Warcry kind of needed a little bit of setup. So my counter to like with more and I try to find a way to make Warcry good. Um, my answer to how to make Warcry you know acceptable or at least interesting was to use Champion of Champions. Champion of Champions was capable of getting that high base strength that makes the doubling effect of um, Warcry interesting or like, you know, cool to use. Your opponent's gonna be kind of surprised by the fact that your Champion of Champions this suddenly goes from like 38, uh, well let's say 20 strength to 40 strength or 30 strength to 60. It's, it's, a, it's really fun to surprise your opponent with you know, that jump in power. Another meme deck that I made, this is for uh, Northern Realms, and you've seen me play this quite a bunch, a lot, is the Chain Bomb deck. Uh, any deck that uses Operator kind of gets close to being a meme deck because you throw a card into your opponent's hand that they probably haven't seen before. So the idea of that was to, if you copy Sabrina, Sabrina can trigger other Sabrinas, and you also have in the neutral faction, you have Iris, which is a silver card right here. I am Sadness, as I call it. So you put the Sabrinas on their board and you give them an Iris and you just hit one and they all go off. It's a chain bomb. It's a chain reaction. And I thought that's a meme deck because all those explosions, it's exciting. It's, I wish the, the UI effect was, or the 
effect was more interesting, the particle effect was more interesting, but it's a lot of explosions. Even if your opponent loses, I think your opponent's actually getting a treat out of seeing all those things explode at the same time. It's a fun thing to pull off. Uh, it's not as consistent as other things, but when it does happen, it's I think it's pretty good. I think it might actually be okay enough to play ranked sometimes because uh, those explosions are kind of fun. Okay, so that's like, you know, giving your opponent a fireworks show, my idea of a meme deck. It's fun to play, it surprises your opponent. Almost always, Operator is going to be an example of trying to make something funny or meme -y for your opponent because it's just throwing something weird in their hands. Is there anything else? I think you guys got a good idea of what I'm talking about when I say I call something a meme deck. Uh, my last one was a little bit weird. It's the Lonely King Aridon. What kind of makes that meme is that you're using Epidemic. That's really what the deck is surprising. You're killing these large things. I kill a villain Trek and Marth with an Epidemic. That's kind of hilarious. Um... Because in most situations, the problem with Epidemic is going to kill your own cards. So by putting F, uh, by playing Aridin and just having Aridin being higher strength than most cards, you just use Epidemic to clear your opponent's board. End of story. You got it. Epidemic becomes strong the higher strength the card, cards you have on the board. You could probably do the same thing with uh, Nilfgaard if you wanted. But the problem is, is that Nilfgaard has Rot Tosser and you'll never play. It'd be hard to play Epidemic with a Rot Tosser deck. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was informative to, you know, the way I think when I make a meme deck.